Well, we thank you for joining us today, Sunday morning, Jesus Saves Ministries and Bishop Shane T. Gaskins. We just hope that you get your Bibles, your pencils and pens ready and prepare to learn more of God's Word. Good morning. We greet you in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, who's the head of our lives. And I just want to make sure and remind you that you need to mask up, praise be to God, and sanitize those hands. Now, I know there's some people who disagree. That's okay. It's cool. There's some people who say, we don't need to wear masks. We don't need to, you know, uh, sanitize our hands. That's okay. But for those who uh, believe that it's not about you covering your face up and keeping your hands clean. It's also about the person who you will come in contact with. So uh, let's trust God and let's put on our mask. You know, God is still in the healing business. We believe in the blood of Jesus. We thank God that by his stripes we're healed. He took all our sicknesses, infirmities, and diseases, and diseases, and he dealt them to the cross. But in the mighty name of Jesus, it wasn't the enemy who said, put this on. He's the one saying, take it off. So let's keep it on. Praise be to God. And if you choose not to, I love you. Praise be to God. And uh, he's worthy to be praised. I'm excited about Jesus. I'm excited about what Jesus stands for. God so loved the world, he gave his only begotten son, Jesus, to die on the cross. But he rose with all power with all authority. Now we can walk in the newness of life. We thank God because there are some people who've never given their life over to Jesus Christ. And I pray that right now, before we get into the word, you would give your life to Jesus. You would turn your heart over to him and confess him as your Lord and Savior. Just with me, for those who have never given their life over to Jesus Christ, those who might want to call their families and their friends, so they can know for a surety when Jesus Christ returns, and he is, that you are saved. There's a heaven to gain and there is a hell to shun. Where will you spend eternity? Praise be to God. With me, if you would, hallelujah, you say, Dear Heavenly Father, I come to you, just repeat after me, in the name of Jesus. Your word says, him that cometh unto me will, I will in no wise cast out. So I know you won't cast me out, but you take me in. And I thank you for it. Thank him right now for taking us in. It's a little storm going on. I'm out here, you know, in the middle of this storm, but that's okay. Praise be to God. It's picking up. Even as we speak, it was calm in the mighty name of Jesus. Those are the forces of the enemy don't want us to go forth. But you said in your word, if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in thy heart that he died and rose from the dead, thou shalt be saved. Say this with me. I believe in my heart that Jesus is the son of God. I believe he was raised from the dead for my justification. I am calling on the name, the name of Jesus. So I know, I know, Father, that you saved me now. You said in your word, with the heart man believeth unto righteousness, and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. I believe and I am saved in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Give God praise for salvation. Oh, none of this means anything unless you are willing to surrender all to Jesus Christ. Jesus is the way, he is the truth, and he is the life. No man cometh unto the Father, but by him, through him. It's in him we live, and it's in him we move, and it's in him we have our being. Praise be to God. We want to pray for those individuals who are challenged with the virus. 
we've been keeping you up in prayer. Uh, those who have lost loved ones, uh, we've lost a few folk in our family, uh, praise be to God. But we just believe and trust that those who know Jesus, they're not lost in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. So we lift up our families and we lift up all those who are challenged. And I don't know if I'm saying this correctly, but E C Isa, no. all right, uh, the storm that's hitting Florida, E.C. Asa, E.C. Isa, I, I, forgive me, E.C. Aya, Ayas, Ayas, E.C. Ayas, I'm close. But anyway, the most important part is that Jesus is Lord and in control. I looked at that word, it means God is my salvation. I-A-S-I-A-S, -I -I -S, and it came out to be God is my salvation. Uh, in the midst of the storm, we are believing God for peace. Uh, my brothers live uh, in Florida and Georgia and Hawaii, and they are being challenged uh, with the possibility of a storm and hurricanes and so forth. We ask that uh, the storm will pass over. And... If God allows it to go through, we thank God for giving us peace in the midst of the storm. Praise be to God. Father God, we just thank you for your peace and your presence over those people who have lost their loved ones because of the virus. We pray for those people who have lost loved ones because of the violence on the streets. We pray, Father God, for those whose uh, family members are sick. You're still in the healing business. We pray healing upon their bodies, minds, and souls in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. We thank you that Satan has no place in our lives. This is the day that the Lord has made, and we are rejoicing, and we are glad in it. Praise be to God. I've been reading to you about spiritual warfare, and uh, there's a great book by Marcelo, Financial Breakthrough, Spiritual Warfare Bible, and in it, it talks about different uh, areas where we are struggling in and where we are challenged in, and we often don't understand how to fight this fight. We often don't understand what this fight is all about. Praise be to God. But we're going to look at Paul as he talks a little bit about some of the things that he has to deal with. And in Ephesians, we're going to start with Ephesians chapter 2. Praise be to God. We left over here on last week, and uh, we had some challenge technically with the equipment, and uh, today the weather is trying to act up, but we're standing on God's promises, and if uh, we would go back and read and pray and study, we'll find that God has some great things in store for us, even in the midst of the storm. Praise be to God. Hallelujah. In Ephesians chapter 2, starting at verse 2, it said, no, let's go to verse 1. It says, and you had he quickened who were dead in trespasses and sin. And then he says, where in times past, somebody say times past, we walk according to the course of this world. Praise be to God. According to the prince of the power of the air. According, hallelujah, to the spirit that now worketh in the children of disobedience. The spirit that now worketh in the children of disobedience. Praise be to God. It says, among whom also we all had our conversation. Praise be to God in times past. Come on, underline that circle. Is, listen, God wants you to go back and read this for yourself. I'm reading this, but I, I pray that you would go back and study. He says, study to show thyself approved unto God. A workman needing not be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. I'm yelling because the wind is blowing and I don't have a mic out, but I want you to hear what I'm saying and hear loud and clear. Praise be to God. It says, among whom also we all had our conversation in times past in the, in the lust of the flesh, fulfilling the desires of the flesh and of the mind, and were by nature the children of wrath, even as others. Do, 
Do I have to exegete this? Praise be to God. I mean, the Holy Spirit is speaking to your heart right now what this says. I wish we had a little conversation or we could talk. Maybe we'll zoom it next time because I know you have some things that you want to say. That blessed you, but it also opened your eyes. Some of you have been struggling with the flesh. Some of you have been challenged. You don't have to remain in that condition. Praise God. I'll read it again. We're in, somebody say, in times past. Hallelujah. In times past, ye walk according to the course of this world. Now, this world is not a home. We're just pilgrims traveling through. Some of us have gotten comfortable. Some of us want a homestead and think that we're here forever. But it's appointed unto man once to die and then the judgment. Praise be to God. But God wants to speak to our hearts now that we might have life and we might have it more abundantly here. So we walk in the spirit. We do not fulfill the lust of the flesh. Therefore, those things we used to do, we don't do anymore because it's not our strength at all. The Bible says, be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might, put on the whole armor of God that we're able to stand against the wiles of the devil. So many challenges are taking place on today. People want to hear about the crime and people want to hear about what are we doing about the prejudice and what we're doing about the hate and what we're doing about all these other things. When in fact, God wants us to recognize what's happening with us as individuals, not as white individuals, not as black individuals, but as his beloved sons and daughters. The Bible says, as many as received him, to them gave he power to become sons of the Most High God. So if we are sons and daughters of the Most High God, this, what I just read, does not pertain to us. This is how we lived in the past. Paul says, forgetting those things which are behind and pressed towards the mark. The only way you can forget all those things which are behind and pressed towards the mark is if you allow the Holy Spirit, which is your teacher, to lead and guide you into all truth. You can't just say, okay, I forgot it, I'm over, I'm moving on, I'm moving on. You might move on, but this flesh, this flesh, hallelujah, will remind you of all the things you've done. Even you've been forgiven for your sins because you walk to God, you walk with him, you, you prayed and you trusted God. Listen what it says in Ephesians, again, chapter 2, it starts off, says, and ye hath he quickened. Who were dead in trespasses and sin. Past tense. We were. We're not dead. We're alive. He's alive. We're alive. Because he lives, we live. I know we're talking about, people want to talk about in the sweet by and by. No, no, no. God wants us to live abundant life here. Now, does abundant life mean things? Does abundant life mean our education, or lack of it, or, or all the other things that we count as important and necessary. It's important to do those things. It's important to live a good life. It's important to have education. It's important to live in a decent community and things of that nature. But let me tell you something. There's something that overshadows and surpasses everything that we see, feel, touch, and taste. The things that are seen are temporal, and the things that are not seen are eternal. Don't get so excited about your temporal house, car. Uh oh, Bishop, don't don't hang up. Come on, I know. I, I, hallelujah. Don't get so excited about your temporal stuff, for the things that are seen are temporal, and the things that are not seen are eternal. Set your affections on things which are above and not beneath. Where are your eyes? I'm not talking about your natural eyes. See, your natural eyes give up. I didn't used to wear glasses, but I can't see like I used to see. And you laughing, you young folks, I'm ah, it's going to happen to you as well. Praise be to God, because this body is decaying. So I cannot see like I used to see. But yet, because I believe Jesus Christ, I see now better than I ever, ever saw before. Why? Because I've given my heart over to Jesus. Why? Because I accept him as my personal savior. Why? Because it's in him we live and move and have our being. Look what he says. He's been quickened. We're no longer dead in our trespasses and sin. Our sins have been forgiven. 
It says we're in in times past. I want you to keep that in your spirit. I, I wanted to move on, but I'm going to rest here for a minute. In times past, ye walked according to the course of this world. How you walking? How are you walking? How are you living? Praise be to God. According to the prince of the power of the air. Praise be to God. Satan is a liar. The spirit that now worketh where? Look, in the children of who? Disobedience. And I'm going to tell you something else. You can't know how to obey unless you understand what it is you should obey. Praise be to God. My dad back in Newark, New Jersey, R.J. Gaskins, he had rules and regulations for his household. We didn't have to get up and guess what time, hallelujah, we should be up cleaning up around the house, especially on a Saturday. We didn't have to guess, praise be to God, that that uh, trash around the house should be taken out and, and, and that it should be kept neat in front of the house. We didn't have to guess those things. We didn't have to guess that you better not have that teacher call home because of your bad behavior. We didn't have to guess about what would happen if, in fact, we disrespected people in our community and our neighborhood. We didn't have to guess it. We wasn't worried about a police officer. We wasn't worried about what the cops was going to do to us. We was worried about what my daddy was going to do to us if we didn't obey those who are in authority. But the authority starts first with God and then him and then all the other people that we came in contact with who had that position of authority. Anybody in the house? Well, so we understood the consequences of our actions, both good and both bad. Well, God is not a man that he should lie. Neither son of man that he should rent, repent. Did he not tell us what it is we need to do? He's saying, listen, we don't have to walk in darkness. We don't have to walk in fear. We don't have to walk in confusion. Praise be to God. We are not under bondage to sin or to darkness. We walk in the light, the beautiful light. Praise be to God. Listen what it says. Hallelujah. The spirit that now worketh in the children of disobedience. And look at verse 3. Among whom we also had our conversation. Look at all this past tense. If you're living this way and you claim to be a believer this morning, turn to the light. If you're living in the past and, and, and walking in the flesh, turn to the light. This is not about going to church. This is not about reading some scripture. This is about a whole lifestyle change. And it does not start with the natural. So you can do all kinds of things to the natural, especially if you have a little money. You can make sure the nails are done, the hair is done. You can make sure you get the right diet and do the work. But it's way bigger than that when it comes to the spiritual realm. There's no contest. In the spiritual realm, praise be to God, you have two forces. You have the spirit of darkness and the spirit of light. You need to choose, this, choose ye this day who you serve. As many as receive him, to them gave ye power to become sons and daughters of the most high God. What a mighty God we serve. Well, why, Bishop? Why do I need to do all that? We just read, praise be to God. This is among whom also, verse 3 of Ephesians chapter 2, verse 3, among whom also we all had our conversation in times past in the lust of our flesh, Fulfilling the desires of the flesh and the mind. And watch this. And what were by nature the children of wrath, even as others. Anybody in the house? Watch this. Verse 4. But God, everybody shout, but God. Hallelujah. Hit it up. Just put, but God. Just type it in. But God, who is rich in mercy. For his great love, wherewith he loved us. We say, wait a minute. How do we know he loved us? Bible says, while we were yet sinners, he sent his son Jesus to come and die for us. He who knew no sin, he became sin, that we might become the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. He loved us while we were yet in our sins. It says in verse 5, Even when we were dead in sin, hath quickened us together with Christ. 
by grace you are saved. His unmerited favor. You say, I heard this. Okay, live it now. I've heard this all my life. This is not a new phenomenon. This is not a new scripture. I don't have anything new to give you other than the word of God, which is fresh. It's fresh manna. It never gets stale. It never gets old. It pertains to every single generation. And Jesus came and died for our sins. But he didn't just die. He rose with all power and all authority. And then he said if we would just receive him, he gave us the power to operate as sons. We are heirs of God and joint heirs with Jesus Christ. We operate as sons. Praise be to God. Listen to what he says. Even when we were dead in our sins, had quickened us together with Christ. By grace we are saved and hath raised us up together. And he made us to sit together. Where? In heavenly places in Christ Jesus. Boy, it's so good to be in Christ. It's in him we live and move and have our being. Hallelujah. The winds are going to come. The storms are going to rise. Praise be to God. All kinds of things in this script because the prince of the power of the air, Satan, he comes and he tries to bring in confusion and wreak havoc. That's why you got to read your Bible. You must read your Bible. You must study your Bible. You say, well, I'm having a challenge with my reading. Put it on your cell phone. Download the Bible. Read and ask the Holy Spirit to open up your understanding. Get with other believers. Praise be to God. Spend time with the Father. Develop a relationship with Him. He's at the door. He's standing at the door. Behold, I stand at the door and knock. He's not going to come in if any man will open the door and let him come in. He said, I'll come in and I'll sup with you. I'll break bread with you. Praise be to God. It's no secret what God can do. What He's done for others, He'll do. For you, what a mighty God we serve. I, I'm just so excited, praise be to God. You know I'm excited not because I'm able to just read this to you. I'm excited because this word was meant for all the believers. This word was meant for who, whosoever will. The Bible says let them come. And Daddy, Abba, wants to speak to the sons and the daughters. There's going to be some powerful word going across the air today. There's going to be ministers who can exegete scriptures. There's going to be ministers who know the Greek and the Hebrew and the Arabic. They know all the uh, tense uh, verbs and adjectives. They know them. They know how to put it right in place. They know. But thanks be to God, you have to know. Everybody ought to know. You don't have to know all of the things I just mentioned. All you need to know is that Jesus died. Jesus died as God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. And God the Son, he ascended to the Father, the right hand of the Father. And guess what he's doing? Interceding for you, praying for you. Praise be to God. What a mighty God we serve. And then he left us the Holy Spirit, God the Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. Who? leads us and guides us into all truth. So I don't care what university you went to or did not go to, that's not the prerequisite. The prerequisite is that you allow the Holy Spirit, hallelujah, to guide you into truth. My prayer is that you would allow Jesus to be your Lord and Savior. We pray that you recognize God the Father. People say, how could this be? By faith, praise be to God, God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit. He transcends anything you can see, feel, touch, taste. Praise be to God, anything you can handle, God's word transcends it. So while there are some powerful men and women, women and women of God preaching this gospel today, this very hour, and we'll do it for the rest of the day, and some will do it all week. It's nothing like you talking and having a relationship Hallelujah for yourself. As I was just talking about my dad, RJ, it wasn't enough that I knew what he said. It went for all of my six brothers and one sister. It went for everybody in the house. 
that he has certain rules and certain things that you could and can't, could not do in his presence or in his absence. Praise be to God. And all I'm saying to you is we have a father who cares. You say, well, my dad wasn't around. He's around now if you choose to have him. I didn't have a family, Angela. Praise be to God. Praise be to God. Thank God. Hallelujah. Uh, we thank God for my wife, Angela. But praise be to God. Listen, if you don't have a wife, a husband, or children, praise be to God, you have a family. You have a family. And what you didn't get then, it doesn't even compare to what God can do now. Oh, yeah, I talked about what my dad do, but he was only limited in what he could do and what he could show me and where he could take me. But God, somebody say, but God. So we don't get bogged down because daddy wasn't there. I can't imagine what that is. But what I can imagine is God will fill up, hallelujah, the, 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 the spot in your heart with all those things that you thought and think and know to be important was not there because there's a thief who's trying to attack and destroy and kill but listen what it says but God enriched in his mercy for his love wherewith he loved us hallelujah while we were sinners by grace we are saved by his mercy and we didn't deserve it but he gave it to us anyhow he deserved, we deserved it because he saw for it, fit for us to deserve it. But we were disobedient. Adam and Eve ate the forbidden fruit. God said, that in the day that you eat of it, you shall surely die. Man died spiritually, separated from God. But Jesus, his grace and his mercy, and hath, listen, raised us up together. He made us sit together in heavenly places. In Christ Jesus. God has already have us in that spot. As believers. Hallelujah. We're connected to the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit already. Praise be to God. I know in the sweet by and by. Yes, the sweet by and by. But there's a sweet here and now. But God wants to give you peace. You say, Bishop, wait a minute now. There's some storms going on. Wait a minute now. People are dying. Wait a minute now. Things are just looking bad around the world. Wait a minute now. Prejudice is all over the place. Wait a minute now. Blacks are killing each other. Wait a minute now. People are beating up the preacher for saying all lives matter. Ho! Oh, praise be to God. But they do. God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life. Any scholar in the world would know that to say all lives matter is inclusive of whosoever will. The Bible says, whosoever will, let him come. Praise be to God. Come. Though your sins might be as filthy rags, let him come. He says, come. Come now. Come in the condition you're in. Come in the state that you're in. Praise be to God. Don't get caught outside of the will of God because we're trying to make some points about who's right and who's wrong. Praise be to God. There's only right. There's only one right, and that's Jesus. There's no other right that are wrong. And when we fall in line with his truth, everything else falls in place. Well, is everybody going to come to Christ Jesus? Praise be to God. That's their choice. That's their decision. But the door is open. Hallelujah. I'm not talking about religion. Uh -uh. No, I'm not talking about religion. I'm not talking about religion. I'm not. I'm talking about a relationship with God. Praise be to God. And you get it through reading his word. Look at verse 7. It says, this is the age to come. Then that in the age to come, verse 7, hallelujah, he might show the exceeding riches of his grace and his kindness towards us. Watch this. Not through Buddha, not through Harry Christian, not through Sung Young Moon, not through Father Divine, not through Daddy Grace. People say, Bishop, you shouldn't even, that's their religion. Uh -uh, no, 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 no. This is what the Word of God says. Let's keep it real. Let's go to the Word of God. Towards us through Christ Jesus. It says, for by grace 
in Christ Jesus, through Christ Jesus, you are saved through faith. And that not of yourself, it is the gift of God. Verse 9, not of works, least any man should boast. Hallelujah. Verse 10, for we are his workmanship created in Christ Jesus. Unto what? Unto good works. Man, if we would just grab a hold to what God is speaking to our hearts, all the challenges we are faced with now, all the hatred, all the prejudice, all the things that are going on in America, just America, praise be to God. If we would just trust God's word and believe God's word and stand on God's promises, praise be to God, we could walk in victory. Satan, who is the God of his heir and the God who's trying to destroy and kill people, he, you know, he doesn't have that right. He doesn't have that authority. Hallelujah. To do it, hallelujah, without being challenged. Now, if you yield yourself to him, praise be to God, because the Bible says he's a God of this world. But he's not the God over this world. He's not the God of, over the believer. Hallelujah. It says, for we are his workmanship in Christ Jesus unto good works which God has before ordained that we should walk in them. I'm in Ephesians chapter 2. It says, wherefore remember that ye being in times past Gentiles in the flesh, we are called, who are called uncircumcision by that which is called circumcision in the flesh made by hand. Look at verse 12. That at that time, underline that, that at that time you were without Christ. There's no need for you to be without Christ today. Before I get off line, I want you to give your life over to Jesus. I, I pray that you would give your life over to Jesus. I pray that you would invite him into your heart. And let me know. Let me know. Let me know. Call me. Text me. Whatever way you can get it to me so we can continue to pray for you in the mighty name of Jesus. That at that time you were without Christ, being aliens from the commonwealth of Israel and strangers from the covenant of promise, having no hope, and without God in this world. You had no hope, and you was without God in this world. Huh? But now, somebody say, but now. In Christ Jesus, you who were far off are made now by the what? Blood of God. Jesus. Mm. Made now by the made nigh and near drawn near by the blood of Jesus. Look at verse 14 of Ephesians 2 and 14. For he is our peace. I don't know how much time I have left, but he is our peace who have made both one. I have about five. I'm told I only have about five minutes. For he is our peace. He's Jehovah Shalom. He is our peace. He is our peace. Praise be to God. Somebody say Jehovah Shalom. He's our peace. Hallelujah. Who hath made both one and has broken down, huh, has broken down the middle wall of partition between us. There's no whole bunch of races of people. There's two people. There's the Gentiles and there's all the Jews, those who were separated now become one. We're one. There's no. We're fighting over denominations. We're fighting over cultures. We're fighting over uh, lives mattering. When Jesus dealt with all of our lives, he broke down the middle wall of partition that was between us, having abolished in his flesh the enmity, even the law of commandment contained in our ordinance for to make in him, watch this, of twine, one new man, one new man, so making peace. The peace is in the blood, the peace is where Jesus are. You're looking for peace in all the wrong places. Man, the reason why you have peace now is because of what Jesus did on Calvary. All the ordinance, touch not, taste not, and all those things. Praise be to God. Look at verse 16. 
and that he might reconcile both unto God in one body by the what cross, having slain the enmity thereby. Look at verse 17. And came and preached peace to you which were afar off and to them which were nigh. For through him we both have access, huh? By how many spirits? One spirit unto the Father. I wish you go back and read this. I don't have time to exegete it, but listen, just listen to the language. Listen at the language. And came and preached peace. He preached peace to you which were far off. And to them that were nigh. Jews and the Gentiles, he broke down that wall of petition. It's one new man. There ain't no black man, green man, yellow man, orange man. Oh, he loved all of us while we were yet sinners. People say, yeah, Bishop, but you just don't understand. Oh, lives matter, black lives. They do. I never would ever think that black lives don't matter. But there's a bigger, much greater picture. And that there's one new man and that was brought forth through the blood of Jesus Christ and him alone. For through him we both have access by one spirit unto the Father. Huh? It's not about the white folks having access and black folks having access and uh, this group having No! For through him we both have access by one spirit unto the Father. Look at verse 19. I'm going to speed it up because my time's up. Now therefore... You are no more strangers and foreigners, but fellow citizens, watch this, I love this, with the saints and of the household of faith. Look at verse 20. And we are built upon the foundation of the apostles and the prophets, Jesus Christ himself being the chief cornerstone. Verse 21. In whom all the building fitly joined together groweth up in and holy temple in the Lord. Look at verse 22. In whom ye also are built together for a habitation of God through the Spirit. So as we prepare to close, I want you to give your life if you've never given your heart over to Jesus Christ. Praise be to God. And I want to pray this prayer of peace over your life. Hallelujah. You're troubled with what's going on. With the virus, your trouble with what's going on with the storm in Florida, we pray peace. It looks like a storm is uh, is coming this way, but praise be to God, we stand on God's promises and we pray for all those people that's right in the eye of the storm, the spiritual storm and the physical storm. We lift up in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. We pray the peace of God upon those who lost the loved one through the virus. We pray the peace of God who lost the son or daughter. I heard there were so many uh, shooters in that black uh, community. Uh, praise God, the, 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 the death have risen in our community, both with the virus and both with the shootings. And, uh, it, 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 you know, it's just uh, God uh, trying to tell us that just come to him. Come, get to know him. Get to trust him as I close with this prayer. Hallelujah. Father God, you give us peace in Jesus. Father God, we have peace with you because we are justified by faith. You are the God of peace, and you are with us. We are spiritually minded, therefore we have your peace. You keep us in perfect peace, for our mind is stayed on you. The peace of God that passes all understanding keeps our hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. Your peace rules in our heart. We are at peace with all oh, men, you make us to be peacemakers. You make even our enemies to be at peace with us in the mighty name of Jesus. Before you go, if there's anyone say, I give my heart over to Jesus Christ. I accept him as my Lord and Savior. Say, repeat after me. I believe that you died on the cross. You rose from the dead. And I accept you as my personal Savior. I confess you as Lord and Savior over my life in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. And if you would go back and read Ephesians chapter 2 and allow the Holy Spirit to speak to your heart. Matter of fact, read the entire chapter. God wants to speak to you. We thank you so much for joining us on today. Once again, for more information, you can go to our website at www. 
www.stg-ct.org. And also, we want to thank you for your giving. Those who have been giving of their tithes and their offering, we thank you so much for supporting the ministry. Thank you. God bless. We love you. God bless. Hallelujah. And we don't own the rights to this music. And also, don't forget to call us, 203-538-5834. And our P.O. Box is 7, Jesus Saves Ministries, P.O. Box 7, Shelton, Connecticut, 06484. God bless. Until we meet again, we love you.